Hello and welcome to the Awakening Empty Nester podcast. We are so pleased you can join us in today's show. I am Michelle. And I am Mark, your host of this podcast, a show that was designed for you, the Awakening Empty Nester. In this series, we will be bringing you a whole range of inspiring insights, heart-filled stories, and conversations with truly amazing people. People just like you. People who have navigated through their own challenges, lessons, and opportunities. People who have transitioned to living a life of deeper experience, heart-filled contribution, and consistent awakening and growth. Find out how they are all living with what we call a strong ECG life pulse. Let's discover more as we dive into this episode. Whether you're an empty nester or not, we trust you will enjoy today's show. Let's get started. Hello and welcome back to the Awakening Empty Nester podcast. We're so grateful for your time today and we're really looking forward to this conversation. As we record this session on Monday the 12th of May, we are still in lockdown. An opportunity to slow down, to reconnect with friends and family and to have some real conversations. We are very honoured to welcome our dear friend all the way from Arizona in the USA, Tracy Benson. Tracy is the founder of Joyful Souls and the Joyful Souls podcast. She is a lifestyle strategist who believes in relational business and partners with her clients to guide them to create the lifestyle of their dreams. She is a coach, speaker, podcaster, entrepreneur, broker and owner of a boutique real estate brokerage. Tracy has an education in engineering, business and nursing, is a self-proclaimed personal development junkie and has a passion to help others find their inner hero and therefore take their lives from ordinary to extraordinary. We have had the pleasure of getting to know Tracy through a couple of courses we have done over the past year and have been touched and inspired by this lady's unconditional spirit of love and kindness. Tracy is on a mission to elevate the frequency of the planet through joy. So turn up the volume and enjoy. Welcome, Tracy. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful welcome. And um, uh, I so appreciate that. And before I say anything else, I just want to thank you and Mark from the bottom of my heart for having me on your podcast, because I so admire both of you and what you have been working on and what you're doing uh, yourself. And getting to know you has been nothing less than fabulous. So I enjoy spending time with you anytime I can. We are deeply honored. Thank you, Tracy. Likewise. Absolutely. Likewise. Thank you, Tracy. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Share your gifts, the Tracy gifts for our listeners. Well, um, I am 57 years old. I was born a military brat. My father was in the service. And so in my early life, I lived overseas in Japan for quite a while. Came home the only bilingual member of the family unfortunately lost that ability because I had no one to speak Japanese to, but it was a great experience for me. And that's where I first learned that I love people of different cultures and learning things about differences that um, we all have. And so I am a mother of three. My kids are all grown. They were, as they call Irish triplets, they are a year apart. So I have a 30 year old, one that is, that just turned 30, one about to turn 29 and one about to turn 28. And so their very early years were really busy. And now I have three grandchildren, all from my oldest son. And my life is uh, changed dramatically over, I'd say, the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. I've been working on myself in personal development for pretty much my whole life. But 15 years ago, when I got divorced, I realized that I needed more work on myself, that I wasn't bringing my best self to the party most of the time. And so I went on a journey reading books, doing all kinds of personal development, anything I could get my hands on, I was doing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't exactly fashionable back then, if you know what I mean. Mm. So uh, then a few years ago, I started doing Tony Robbins events and I got hooked. I got hooked on the fact that at those sorts of immersion events, you can grow exponentially and make leaps and bounds on things that you're working on. Mm. 
And because of that, I had been coaching for a long time, but I realized I wasn't coaching people on some of the right things, Mm -hmm. like that mindset is the key to most everything we do. If we don't have our mindset in the right place, we just don't flourish. Mm -hmm. So one of my gifts, if you want to call it, is I'm really good at assessing where people lack their mindset, what areas, because, you know, we'll have strong areas that we have great mindset in. Mm -hmm. And we need to develop an all over fairly equal mindset, being able to call on it anytime we want, Mm -hmm. given any situation, just like what's going on now with COVID, your Mm -hmm. chance to reconnect. For some people, they're not reconnecting, they're disconnecting. And that's all mindset. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell us about, you said there came a time in your life 15 years ago when Things were not feeling good. You just got divorced. How old were the kids? Um, They were 13. Well, I guess when we first separated, they were 12, 13, 14, and 15. Right. 13, 14, and 15. Yeah. So yeah. how was life for you then? What was the turning point for you, the time when you decided that you've had enough of that life? Well, my, my, um, their, my children's father is an alcoholic and he still is. Um, he was an alcoholic and, you know, I was with him for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And at one point I realized, just realized towards the end of the relationship that I wasn't doing my kids any favors by Mm -hmm. staying, that they were learning things in our household that they didn't need to learn, like how not to have a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I saw that in my kids as they were blossoming into teenagers because then, you know, they were liking the boys or the girls. I have two Mm -hmm. boys and a girl. And their little relationships were dysfunctional. And they were doing what they learned from us. Mm -hmm. And I had years before that stopped the fighting because I'd been done so much work on myself that I could just, I could control myself, but of course I couldn't control him. Mm -hmm. And I realized when I got out of that, that I needed to find the best me so that when I got into a new relationship, that relationship could flourish and I wasn't bringing old baggage Mm -hmm. to my new person. Sure. So what I'm hearing, Tracy, is that you decided you would work on yourself so that you would become the best version of yourself to then attract a much healthier relationship into your life for yourself and for your children. Absolutely. And uh, so then the work began, the real work began. And so, you know, a few years, and actually what's really crazy is I actually met my current partner during that transition period. I was not the best version of myself yet. But sometimes we meet people when we're not looking. In fact, sometimes when we're not looking is the best time Mm. because we're not focused on what we're trying to get. We just let things be. So I met my current partner and I was just looking for someone to have fun with, to do things with. And that's all he was looking for too because he had recently had a, a relationship end as well. Mm -hmm. And, but as time goes on, you know, it blossomed anyway, but I was still on that journey Mm -hmm. to make sure I brought the best of myself to the table. So a few years later, when I was involved with a multi-level marketing company, and I wasn't building a business, but I was helping them as an ambassador in their company, help the other reps grow and learn. And this is how I got introduced to the real Tony Robbins world. Although I'd read many of Tony's books and done CDs and, and I'll date myself cassette tapes back in the day. (laughs) Um, But I'd never been to a live event. Well, this person was trained by the Tony Robbins um, staff and she was one of his top trainers. And I was struggling. I was struggling with that daily joy piece. I was like, why am I not happy? Why am I always like just not quite satisfied. What is, you know, my whole mindset? What's wrong with me? Why is this? So I was blessed and she gave me a couple hours of her time on the phone. And that's when I figured out I had one of the worst blueprints you could ever have. My father was military. We grew up with lots of rules. People with lots of rules have a hard time finding happiness in anything because we're always looking for the next step to make it perfect. Right. Right. 
So she helped me identify that I was so rule driven and most of these rules didn't even belong to me. Mm -hmm. They were crap that were passed down from my parents, my grandparents, my teachers, uh, society, jobs even, you know, and um, I had assimilated all that thinking that was the way I had to be in order to be successful and to be loved and to have joy and all this. But doing all those things, I was never, ever going to achieve it. So that was my big step in finding daily joy. And that's why my podcast is called Joyful Souls. My page is Joyful Souls. And my group is Joyful Souls Rising. Because I found when I found that small piece, my life shifted Mm -hmm. in a way that I never, ever imagined. My rules are simple now. I get to come on your podcast. Mm -hmm. I feel daily joy. (laughs) I see my grandchildren I get daily joy. Mm -hmm. I don't have all these expectations set out where it has, you know, you have to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Mm -hmm. and they have to be done perfectly. And that came with a perfectionist gene too, which I've also, thank God, gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. Thank thank the heavens for that. (laughs) Um, And I I can have daily joy in any moment that I want. Mm -hmm. And that peace shifted my life forever because in the deepest, darkest, things that happen and stuff happens for us. We don't realize it, but it's for us. I can find the joy in it Mm -hmm. every single time now. Sometimes it takes a little longer, you know, it might take a couple hours, but it used to take never or weeks or months. And now it's generally a few seconds to a couple of hours, depending on the level and intensity of the thing that's distressing. Mm. That's that's fantastic. I, I resonate with that really well. I felt the same when I, that came to my realization as well. I had all of these things, you know, this has to happen and this has to happen and this has to happen for me to feel good. Or, you know, my children have to perform this way. They have to do this, they have to do this, this and this. And if that is true, then I'm happy. And this silly programming, man, it was like, gosh. And as soon as I had an awareness of that, things started to change. Mm -hmm. I remember you telling me how your coach said to you, write down a few things that bring you joy. Couldn't do it because I was so rule-based and because I was so in tune with serving others, my children, my sick wife at the time, all of those things, everything was external focus. That all of these things I had to do. So I, I totally get what you're talking about, Tracy. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, isn't it an amazing feeling now when you strip that crap out? <laughs> yes, you can feel joy. Mm-hmm. Yes, you still get tripped up on occasions. And I like how you said that, that depends on the intensity and the emotional connection to it, uh, it can vary. But awareness of it is really, really key. And having those skills to be able to work through that and find the joy, find the appreciation, find the gratitude in, in what's going on there, I think is an amazing lesson. Absolutely. And I will agree with you. I was going to say my second thing that that completed that shift for me yes. was the last thing that you said is finding gratitude right. in everything, mm-hmm. not just the big things, but all the small things, waking up in the morning, you know, having, you know, in my case, I drink tea, having my cup of tea, mm-hmm. you know, just mm-hmm. the, the most minute things. If you're grateful for those, it's almost, it floods you when you have something really momentous and you don't even have to go to gratitude it just comes to you Mm -hmm. naturally if you practice that on a regular basis so between the joy and learning to practice gratitude Mm -hmm. it is um, entirely shifted my life question for you tracy in terms of gratitude it's something that i have I've done the practice of gratitude and i've done it for all the things that bring me joy and and i feel appreciative about There's also another level, and I want to ask you this question. How do you feel about feeling gratitude for challenges, hurts, things that haven't necessarily felt good? Um, Well, actually, that is a part of my practice. I'm not just grateful for the good things that happen during the day. I'm grateful for the things that I don't think are so great Mm -hmm. uh, because those are the ones I grow from. 
Those are the ones that show me what I'm made of. Those are the ones that show me how hard I've worked to get where I am, where those things don't control me. They don't control my emotions. I have control of that. I have get, I get to make the choices without feeling overwhelmed. And not that I don't feel overwhelmed occasionally. I'm human. I'm not a robot. But I have the skills and the tools. And yes, the gratitude for the things that, that are the worst, it's kind of like, um, in the Tony Robbins world, especially when you have, well, even if it's a circumstance, when you have a difficult situation with someone and you, we, we tend to want to blame, right? That's a natural thing. Well, they said they did. They made me feel the effective blame. So you blame for the good as well as the bad. Mm -hmm. And almost always when you do that, you'll find the good outweighed the bad anyway. Mm -hmm we tend to focus on the things that don't go well. So now I've shifted my focus. I mean, I focus on them, but in a different way, mm -hmm. what good came of this? What lesson did I learn? What can I be grateful for? What do I now know that I want to try to avoid in the future? Mm. Those kinds of things bring that full circle. If you don't have that peace, you can be grateful all you want for the happy stuff. But every time you have a major thing mm. or even a moderate thing, it's going to take you out of the game. And for yeah. how long? Who knows? That's, That's up right. to you. Yeah. But, you know, you can see people. I mean, I used to ruminate on things for months, you know, back in the day when I didn't have joy. I'd be like, you know, mm. going over and over and over the thing that I didn't like or whatever, whatever it was. And instead of focusing on what it brought me. You know, so I, mm. I focus on all the things that have happened in my past. I had a narcissist business partner. I'm so grateful to him because I would not be where I am now mm. without that struggle, without that challenge. My ex-husband that's an alcoholic, um, you know, my brother passing away and me um, really taking charge of the household at a very young age and giving up my childhood, basically. Mm. I've never actually blamed my parents for that. I've always been grateful because I knew what gifts it gave me. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. And it's, it's hard, isn't it, sometimes when you're in the moment of the challenge to feel gratitude, but over time as you practice and you practice and practice, you can find the gratitude within that moment. And that's when you not only grow quicker, but you, you feel the joy, like you say, you feel the bubble of joy coming up and not feel guilty for it. Because there are times when, like for example, we were talking earlier about um, our cats passing away. You know, if I was to hold on to my cat leaving us and being sad and continually being sad and not feeling the gratitude around what this cat has brought into our lives and the deep love that I felt. And I say if I kept focusing on the sadness, then... I'm pushing down those bubbles of natural joy that come up when I think about our cat, right? So that happens in every instance. Yeah. So that not only the growth, but the joy comes from that. So thank you for sharing that. No problem. You've shared that you find joy in the easy things, your cup of tea, your grandchildren. What do you focus on? What brings you joy at a deeper level? They're honestly, these days, not a whole lot that doesn't right. um, because I've made it such a focus in my life that it's rare that I can't find something joyous about even, and I, I'll just say this right now, because this is a hard thing for a lot of people, um, death. I can always find the joy in that as well. Even if it's, you know, someone that is close to me. Yeah. I just have chosen to make that shift. So because of that, even the small joys have a very deep impact on me. I feel them to my soul most of the time when I do my gratitude and my, you know, and talk about my daily joys, which is what I do as soon as I wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. As soon as I wake up in the morning, every single morning, it fills me from the inside out. And so it really no longer takes a monumental joy for me to feel it like all the way to my core mm -hmm. because I've trained myself sure. to feel even the small ones, yes. the same as the big ones yes. so that I'm appreciative 
of the simple things in life because I really honestly believe that most of those things are the things that matter most. Mm -hmm. It's not the, it's not the big accolades or the winning the prize or writing a book or starting a podcast or making an X amount of money or having grandchildren or children. If you can be truly joyed to the depths of your soul in the small things, Mm -hmm. You've got it made because you're always going to be able to find small things, even in the midst of tragedy. Mm-hmm. Can I add to that? You know, you're talking about feeling it in your core, in your soul. I believe this is my belief that joy is a natural state of being. And we don't need the things around us to help us to feel joy. We just wake up. We can train ourselves like you are doing because because of the number of years that we've lived and the programming and the beliefs that have come to us that we've learned to some of them master to our detriment we've covered over the knowing that joy is at our core that love joy and peace is at our core it's part of who we are and so we look on the outside to bring things in to make us feel joy but once you've trained yourself to remove those layers like you have every single day you're feeling appreciation and gratitude peeling back the layers and truly feeling that emotion bubble up inside of you i'm sure there will be a day and i'm sure you're already feeling this where you just feel joyful for no reason you're just joyful and i do i do quite often and people are like why are you smiling and i'm <laughs> like what i'm yeah. really happy right now well what happened nothing yes but you know too to more to your point i fully agree with you i think the i our soul mm. is a truly joyful loving connected fully fulfilled thing mm-hmm. the problem is we have a survival mind Mm -hmm. and the survival mind if we let it control Mm -hmm. instead of keeping the eye the soul in control that's exactly where we go but Mm -hmm. that's the social programming we're Mm -hmm. talking about where we have learned to let our primal brain Mm -hmm. take over for us instead of our joyful soul because there is no soul in my opinion that is not full of joy Mm -hmm. because they don't have it's not an earthly bound thing Mm -hmm. it's an endless like state of being it has nothing to do with the physical body or the survival mind exactly nice. it's an emotion it's a frequency it's a vibration joy and that's what mm. we are yep. yeah the only Absolutely. thing that we've put like you've got going back to the start of the conversation is we put that the rules the boundaries the matrix over the top of that and it gets imprisoned inside of us and we can no longer feel it so once we break down yeah. that prison, that matrix, those rules, you can start to feel it bubble up inside of you. And you literally, like I literally will feel like the emotion comes up inside of me. It just, in, I feel inside. And then I'll go and say something funny to Mark. Well, I think it's funny anyway. And I'll start laughing <laughs> and Mark will look at me and what are you on about? You know, I'm just happy. <laughs> yep. Well, so, Mark, Mark and my husband will have, have something in common too, or my, my partner, because I'll just start laughing over nothing. And he's like, what are you laughing? I'm like, I'm just happy. Do you ever laugh by happy. yourself when you're by yourself at home? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, certainly yeah. that's a great place to be, in, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. So if you could go back yeah. in, if you could go back in time, and uh, go back to your former self, the time when you were not feeling, you, know, you were feeling sad, down, low energy, all of those things, and your current you could go back. What would you, how would you teach your younger self to feel that joy? What would you say? What would you do? I would, because I, I wish somebody would have told me this that years ago, yeah. that those rules that I was living by, that need to have everything in order and perfection and do it a certain way to get a result. Yes. Otherwise, you weren't successful. And if you weren't successful, you couldn't be happy. I would go back and explain that they didn't need any of those rules and start shedding them right now. And just, you know, layer after layer after layer and give them that support to do it because a lot of times we don't do it for fear of societal pressure if we don't act and behave and look a certain way people might not like us we might not be included and that's again our survival mind so i would also teach my 
my younger self about my survival brain and that everybody has one and that most people are when they say things that we don't like it's a reflection of themselves it has nothing to do with us mm-hmm. so i mean i'd probably have to spend about i don't know maybe a month with my <laughs> i mean former self to try to try to get them on the track i wish there was one little thing that i could say to shift it mm-hmm. other than i might if i taught them nothing else i teach them about the uh, you know the triangle that your language and meaning your focus mm-hmm. and your physiology control most of everything you do in life and if you can get if you can shift that control back to yourself through your soul the rest will follow that's right very empowering that triangle definitely so it's also you when you were talking about the fear of people judging you or what they think about you and you know the identity that you have if you do something different or if you think a certain way or don't think a certain way you're worried about what other people think and your reptilian brain starts to to chime in and say oh well you better not do that because you will get hurt or you won't be loved or you won't feel cared for i feel that sometimes empty nesters going through that time some of them whom we have talked to when their children have left home they are afraid to actually show joy because they're supposed to be sad. They're supposed to feel like they really, really love their kids, so therefore don't show the joy, don't let the joy bubble up inside of them. And to be honest, that was part of how I felt too. I felt um, bound by how I was supposed to act. And to be honest, it wasn't that I was feeling joy because they left. It was just because I was feeling joy because I was feeling free. I had more time and I was looking forward to my dreams with Mark. And it was just having no more daily routine, no worries. I still have a few worries, but no daily worries about them. And um, Mm -hmm. that identity, that identity that we get stuck in sometimes as parents to be worried, to be caring, to be always there for our children. I think that binds a lot of empty nesters into a life that was still pre pre the children leaving. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, well, you, what you're saying is the rules. You, you're mm. getting bound up by the rules that we've been referring to, and it's such a, such a great point. We have these rules. You're, you're an empty nester, you, your kids leave. The rule is, potentially, because everyone's rules are different, you potentially have this rule that you have to be sad. You must miss them. You must do these sorts of things. Mm. And you've got this conflict potentially happening inside you. So your children have left. You've got three. You've got two that have left the house and you've got one that's essentially gone, living in a a guest space you were talking about. How did you go? How did you go with when the kids moved on? Was that a challenge for you? Where were you in your personal development journey? Were, Were you in that still working out those rules or were you uh had already gone through that well i had gone through a lot of that already um and i when my kids left it was i'm gonna say it's odd it's like it's kind of like having this hole that you're not really sure what to do with yeah right and you're and again there's some guilt as a parent, like, am I supposed to be, I'm not supposed to be happy that they're gone Mm -hmm. because I really was quite joyful that they're gone. I'm going to be just totally blatantly honest. Mm -hmm. I love my kids to death. They've come home several times, but I just, I was happy for them and I was happy for me to move on to that stage. Mm -hmm. But I think because of where I was in my journey, that facilitated that my allowing myself to go ahead and feel that happiness, which I think a lot of people don't. Mm -hmm. And I think we've got a two pronged problem here because if you've got a couple that have been together for a long time and they focused all their time and energy on raising their children, Mm -hmm. which if anybody's listening out here that has small children, don't do that. Focus on your marriage first, your kids are later Mm -hmm. because that's one thing we do wrong. We give all our time and energy to our children And we lose our relationship. And sometimes when the kids go, there's even more sadness because we feel disconnected from our partner. And we feel like we're, I I hear it a lot because I do a lot of relationship work Mm -hmm. with people that they don't know their partner anymore and they feel like they've lost everything. 
and they're not sure how to get it back. Well, the good news, you can get anything back. It's not really lost. You just put it in the closet somewhere and you're going to have to work to bring it back. Mm -hmm. That's all. You just got to go dig it, dig through the boxes until you find it. Exactly. And, you know, so when you couple that with that and then the loss of the kids and for some people feeling that that was their purpose in life, mm -hmm. it's a big shift for anyone. But the good news, you can come out on the other side so much better than you ever were before you had children mm -hmm. by just putting in the work and the time and giving yourself some time and space to go ahead and grieve that loss. It's a loss. Mm -hmm. You can grieve it. Just don't sit in the muck too long. Exactly. Let it feel it. Let it flow through you and go out and go and find people like Mark and Michelle who run groups like this that will help you get your energy, your passion, your clarity, your new purpose back. Mm -hmm. And if you're a younger person and your kids are still at home and you're watching this, start working on that now. Mm -hmm. So when they leave, you're setting that example for them because we all learn by example. Exactly. That's where we get most of our rules that don't belong to us is somebody mm -hmm. set that example, not because they wanted to harm us, that's what they learned. So they did what they learned and we do what we learn. Mm. So start now. And then by the time your kids go out, mm -hmm. you'll be fine. But if you are in that spot right now and you're listening to this and you're sad, you're lonely, you're disconnected, whatever you're feeling, it's valid. Those are your feelings. You're entitled to have them. But we want you to feel daily joy. We mm. want you to be excited when you get up for what's your next adventure. Where are you going to go travel to? Hey, listen, I don't have to take any kids with me. I can go <laughs> to Tokyo tomorrow if I want to. Start planning your life as if it's an adventure and excitement will follow. And I guarantee you that if you have Mark and Michelle as your guides, They'll get you there a lot quicker too. We all need a little help from our friends. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Well, maybe not quite to Tokyo straight away now that we're in lockdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with the COVID, we got to wait a little bit for that, but pretty soon. Well, it's funny you say that because our booked, already booked destination, our next destination is to fly into Tokyo. So, it's, <laughs> yeah, and you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> say, well, I, want, I want to go back to Japan. I haven't been there since I was a little girl. So oh, that's really? probably why that was in my head too. Yeah, yeah. So, so November, join us in November. With you. Yes, yes. And come and visit Australia while you're at it as well. Oh, that's on my bucket list. You guys are in my <laughs> bucket list country. That's someplace I've never been that I've always wanted to be because I'm such a nature lover and of all animals. And you've got, you guys have got some of the coolest I know. animals on the planet we have i know that your most favorite animals are reptiles is that right tracy well actually i love all animals yeah. i just used to breed australian bearded dragons okay. so um you know but my boys had snakes we had other lizards you know we've probably had pretty much any kind of animal that is, you know, domesticatable <laughs> at one point or another in my house. Right. Okay. Well, we have plenty of those where we live on Tambourine Mountain, including frogs <laughs> that sound like ducks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure you got that right, but yes. And, and the nice two and a half meter, what's that, about an eight foot long python that slithers around our yard and up on our neighbor's deck mm. and has a nice feed on some I've birds. Seen your yeah. I've seen your pictures and I'm like, oh, cool. I want to go touch that. I was like, gross. <laughs> He's not much, my partner's not much into snakes or reptiles himself. So, but we'll give him the koalas and the kangaroos. We'll give, we'll give Tracy's yep. partner the, the koalas and the kangaroos. Oh, for sure. Because they won't hurt yeah. you. <laughs> Those are cute and furry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So any listeners out there who are, Thinking about Australia, I've dreamt about coming to Australia. It is not a dangerous place like most people around the world think. Yes, we do have some very unusual animals and insects. But, you know, we the worst I've been bitten is by a, what they call it, a jumping jack ant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. where I screamed and then that was it. But <laughs> I didn't pass out. <laughs> You know, you've not, you've not lived unless you've seen something you don't see. 
at home. Exactly. You got to get out and explore and, exactly. you know, not be afraid of things yes. because if we live in our fear, we never do anything. That's Indeed. right. And, and why? Because we want to be joyful. We want our yes. soul to scream, to exude that natural joy mm -hmm. that we all are. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's, that's the way to, uh, yeah. that's the way to elicit it is by having adventures for sure. Absolutely. Right. And that's, that's what, why we teach the, the pillars of, well, one of the pillars is to experience more and more deeply and, and even change your perspective on your experience because the experience you're having right now it might, might feel dull, it might feel boring, it might feel lonely. But if you change your perspective, and you talked about that earlier with the triangle, if you change your focus on what it is and bring in the appreciation for what you have, then you're creating a new experience altogether. So you know, having, having a strong pillar of bringing more enriched experience into your life is something that we, we love to share with our, our clients and our listeners. So Tracy, one of the things that I love about you is on your Facebook page, if not every day, if not every other day, but pretty much every day, I see you walking and doing a Facebook Live in either on your personal page or in your group. And I love the fact that you contribute to your listeners, to your groups and so on because of that consistent connection that you have for people and providing from from silly anecdotes to deeper meaning stories to observations to a whole host of things. What is it about that? How did you start doing that? What was the mindset that brought you to bring in to deliver that? What is it about that that brings you joy? Well, it's funny. I, I have a trail behind my house and I walk on it every day. And um, I w had started doing Facebook Lives as part of my practice. Um, and you know, I was doing them in front of a computer. And then one day I was out walking and I thought, why don't I just do a live while I walk? And the funny thing is, is that motion, we know motion causes emotion. Yes. And so I felt like as I was moving, I was downloading what I was saying because I, I never rehearse anything. I'm just one of those kind of off the cuff people, whatever comes to my mind, that's what's going to come out of my mouth. And sometimes, you know, <laughs> it may come out as a jumbled mess and I have to straighten it out, but I just like downloading in real time. Mm -hmm. And so I found that I downloaded more authentically and I would go deeper because I was in motion. And I found that I, it w was actual because of the response I got from other people. I know there was a few times where I had things going on and maybe I was still doing my walks, but it was like dark out. And so I didn't do some lives and I literally had people messaging me on a messenger going, are you okay? <laughs> you know, I, I, I miss my walks with you. And a lot of these people never even would chime in and say anything or post anything, mm -hmm. but they were with me. And it was like, they would say, I love it because you get me. And all I was doing was talking about my own experiences, but that's how we connect with others because they see it. And further thing for me was this December, because I just started doing the lives last February and March, a year ago, February, March. In December, I went to date with Destiny okay. in leadership. And I had people that I did not know, they were on my Facebook, but I never met them and never really talked to them, come running up to me and go, I love your walking lives. I watch you on the replays if I don't catch you, but I know what time you usually watch and I look for you. And to me, that meant I was doing something right because the reason I was doing it was not only for myself, because it's therapeutic whenever we share. Mm. We share our story, when we share our feelings, we shall share fun, whatever it is, it's good for our soul. But when I realized I was actually touching other people with it, mm -hmm. it became so much more important to me. Because contribution is the way we connect the best. When we're contributing to others and serving others, mm. we are way more connected than we'll ever be serving ourselves. So true. Beautiful. So true. You're so right about that, that connection. You just feel like you're, you're part of a bigger picture. 
And that contribution helps us all connect and feel the, the ripple of joy that comes from you. So thank you for doing that, Tracy. That's really just, just an amazing contribution, like you said. It's my pleasure, and it brings me, um, you know, utter joy anyway, so I'm winning all the way around. <laughs> so one last question. Yes. How would you, Tracy, how would you define an awakening soul? For me, an awakened soul, there's a couple of parts to it. First off, to be awakened, you have to be aware. You have to come to a place of awareness where, where you're aware of yourself, your impact, your your strengths, your weaknesses, just awareness of all of who you are and acceptance of that. And once you're accepting of it, you are awakened because you're looking, in my opinion, you're looking for more. You're looking to expand and grow because you're awakened and you become a seeker uh, and seekers of knowledge and expansion and, and the freedom that comes with that is amazing so an awakened soul is an expansion seeker who knows basically you know about themselves and is seeking to enrich themselves all the time beautiful beautiful an expanded like soul yes thank you tracy that is an amazing explanation of an awakening soul and we totally resonate with that thank you too for the stories that you have told thank you for the share of your own awakening of all the growth that you have put in, that you have committed to doing for yourself, for the experiences that you know, you're know you willing people to go and experience, go on adventure, go and be curious. And, and like you just said just now, go and seek out different things. And also for the contribution that you deliver. And you deliver it just by sitting there. We feel it. We feel the joy. We feel the, the, the light within you. So it's been... A wonderful conversation and we hope that your mission of awakening joy in your tribe in our tribe our listeners continues for a long long time and we're certain that you have already touched the hearts and souls of our listeners today if you have been listening to Tracy and it has sparked some joy in you you can link up with her at Tracy what's the best way people can link up with you uh, they can reach out to me directly via email at Tracy Benson at joyfulsouls.com. And my first name is T-R-A-C-E-Y, B-E-N-S-O-N. And or they can hit me at Instagram or Facebook at Tracy E. Benson. Awesome. And we'll have those exact details in our show notes. So any last thoughts, Tracy? No, I just so appreciate you two. And I look forward to... Uh, watching all of your podcasts so far they have been simply utterly fabulous and i can't wait for more oh, thank, thank you thank you very much tracy so dear listeners we don't take this time with you lightly we work every day to be the living example of everything we teach we are always honored and privileged to have the opportunity to contribute to your life in some way yes this is a great honor and opportunity to deliver information and the fact that you are taking an hour out of your day to listen to this podcast we are humbled by that that you made the effort and if you feel awakened by one of our podcasts please share your experience with us reach out and send us an email till we return with our next guest may you be inspired to awaken to your joy by opening your world to deeper experience unconditional contribution and consistent growth and living with a strong ECG life pulse. It's goodbye from Mark and myself and thank you again, Tracy Benson. Thank you. This is the Awakening Empty Nester podcast. Thank you for listening to this week's episode. If you enjoy what you heard today, share with a friend. And if you have not already done so, please subscribe, rate and review the show on your favourite podcast player. If you have any questions, comments or feedback for us, you can reach us directly at podcast at thedreamarchitects.com. Looking forward to you joining us on our next show. Thank you for listening.